Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for making the wine glass animation. So this is the first of our animations and it's very uh, simple. We're going to uh, create a wine glass, give a little bit of a background, add a marble inside of it, and then we're going to animate it to make it look like this. So it's just going to rock back and forth and then fall over and dump the little marble, marble out. Uh, so I'm going to go in and open up Blender. Um, I had already opened up a new file, but if you haven't yet, we can go File New. Yeah. General. Um, I'm going to save this right away so that I can keep saving it as I go. So I had, uh, did Control S. Um, and then I had already started this one, so I'm going to name it Wine Glass Tutorial. Save my Blender file. And then I'm going to... Remember to save it as I go because Blender likes to crash. Okay, I'm going to delete my cube to start off. And then I'm going to go into front view. So I hit number pad one. And I'm just going to turn on my keys. Okay, so now like before you should be able to see um, when I click or when I do anything. So I'm in number pad one I hit to get into front orthographic view. So we're going to start by adding um, something new that we haven't done before. It's called a... Uh, curve. So I'm going to go shift A to uh, my shortcut to add, and I'm going to add a curve called Bezier. So what this basically does is it, um, it sets up this curve like this. So I'm in object mode right now. I'm just going to switch to edit mode by hitting tab. And you can see that it's got kind of two points. There's one here that I can select and one here that I can select. And so those are the ends of the curve that we can move around. Um, so I'm back in uh, front view, number one. Uh, I'm going to take this one and, on the left, and I'm going to move this up, and it's going to be the top of our wine glass. Uh, I'm going to put it around there. I'm going to select this one. So I'm, I'm clicking on the, the middle of the dots, because that's kind of where the end is. I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to move it to kind of like the middle point of uh, between these kind of lines here. So what we're actually doing is we're making a, uh, we're going to make kind of a curve that's going to be the kind of cross section of the wine glass. So as if you were to take a wine glass and cut it in half and then look at it from the side. So kind of we're getting like the thickness of the, the cup part of the wine glass. Uh, so I'm going to take this uh, bottom one here. I'm going to extrude it by hitting E. That makes another part of this curve, which I'm just going to bring down here. And I'll place it right around there. I'm going to hit E again to extrude it. And I'm going to bring it up to somewhere around there. And E again and extrude it. I'm going to bring it up kind of near the top one. Okay, it looks awful right now. Um, if you just scroll around, yeah, it looks awful. We need to do some fixing up of the angles. So I'm going to start by rotating some of these. So these kind of line extensions, I like, kind of like to think of them as like the angle that the, the curve is coming off at. So if I rotate, if I select it, uh, and then rotate by hitting R, that's my shortcut, you can see you can kind of start to yeah, change the uh, direction, the curve of the, of the curve. So I'm going to do this one. So this is where you can kind of play around and you might have to do them a few times to kind of get, yeah, to kind of get a curve of a wine glass that you like. I do not like this. I'm going to keep moving them around and playing with them. So something like that. Now, we don't want um, this curve to stay like this. We need some more vertices that we can use. So we're going to convert this into um, a mesh. So in object mode, I have my curve still selected. If you don't, you can go up here and click on it. Um, and then I'm going to go click on object and down to convert to and convert to mesh from curve. So that will take our curve and turn it into a mesh. If I go back into edit mode, you see now I've got all these vertices. I'm going to save it. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to make the kind of the stem of the wine glass. So I'm going to take, let's start with this one right here. I'm going to extrude it, bring it down. Uh, 
Don't know on the z-axis. Yeah, maybe to there. And then I'm going to extrude it again along the x-axis this time. And I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to extrude on the z to bring up. So I'm making the base of the stem. Extrude s. X, sorry. Bring it over. Something like that. And then uh, I'm going to move that over a little bit more. Sure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, this point right in here, which I know is hard to see. So I'm going to hold down shift to select that point as well. And I've got those two uh, vertices selected. Uh, and I want to connect them. So I'm going to right click and go new edge or face from vertices. And that will make a new edge. So again, that was selecting them and then hitting right click. Okay, so I've got a decent cross section of my wine glass. Um, I'm gonna save. So now I need to make this into the actual shape of a wine glass because right now it's just half of a cross section. So to do this, I'm still in edit mode. So I've got all these vertices. I'm gonna select them all by hitting A. So I hit A and then I'm gonna go over to this little tool called spin. Um, so I'm gonna click that. It looks like a little pie or a little Trivial Pursuit pie. You click on that uh, and then it's going to give you the option to basically spin this around and create an object as it does that. So it's going to be kind of radially symmetric. So uh, a couple of things or one thing to change is you want instead of nine steps we're going to do 18 and that will basically be like 18 sections um, of the circle. If we go and hit seven, okay, so then you're going to uh, click this little plus and you're going to spin it around and you can see that it's creating the shape as you drag it uh, And then I'm just gonna overlap a little bit and go into there So it looks like that If you look around you've got the shape of a wine glass beautiful. I'm gonna save it A um, Couple other things we're gonna do real quick if you hit a I uh, go back into edit or into object mode Sorry, by hitting tab um, and then if you right click, you can shade it smooth. I'm just turning my keys back on because Blender crashed. Okay, so it's uh, a little funky the way that the smoothing works. So I'm just going to go over to this tab, the little green triangle. And then under normals, select auto smooth. And there, I've kept the kind of the angles at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, we've got a fairly smooth looking wine glass. So now to um, make the uh, wine glass look like it's made of glass, a um, couple of things I'm going to do first is I'm first of all going to put a table underneath it. So if I go shift A, add a mesh cube, uh, I'm going to move it down so it's underneath. I'll go to view one so I get it right underneath. Um, and then I'm going to size it. So I'm going to hit size and X because I just, or sorry, hit S for size and then X because I just want to make it uh, bigger along the X axis right now. So that looks good. Uh, but if I go around, it's a thin little table. So if I hit S and Y, now I can make it, oops, sorry, S and Y, I can make it bigger. Sorry, undo, undo, undo. I didn't select it properly. Hold on. S, Y. There we go. I need to do it again. S, Y. There we go. Okay. Rough shape of a table. And your glass should be sitting right on it. Uh, I'm also going to set up my camera. So I'm going to go into camera view real quick. Zero. Uh, cool trick. If you hit N to open up your sidebar, and then you go uh, to uh, view, if you click this lock camera to view, then when you're in camera view, you can scroll to zoom in and out. You can uh, click your mouse button and rotate around, and it'll uh, yeah change the view of the camera. So I'm going to put it somewhere like this, maybe zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna have the marble falling off the table, so maybe something like that. Okay, I've got my camera set up. I'm gonna go to there, I'm gonna save it, uh, and I'm gonna hide the toolbar by hitting in. So now we're gonna make the um, 
Actually, first I'm going to add a texture to the table. So uh, I just think it looks better when it's glass, if you can see kind of the uh, through to the table bottom. This step is optional. If you don't want to do it, it's fine. Uh, but I'm going to go into materials. So I've got my cube highlighted. I'm going to go into materials, new. Uh, I had previously saved a uh, picture of like a wood block kind of thing or butcher block kind of cutting board thing. Um, so wood basically. So I'm going to go under uh, base colors, click the circle, go to image texture. Uh, I'm going to click this little file, which is open. And then I saved it under textures, wood texture. So I found my file, I open it. Uh, and now if I change my viewing to materials, it should show up on there. So it's kind of wood. Uh, I'm really quickly going to change the size of that because I don't like how that is. So if I go to UV editing, uh, I've got my UV already mapped out because it makes one for a cube already. Um, but if you go over here and you hit A and S, so you select it all and then sized it. You can change the size of it. Uh, go back to the layout and that looks that looks fine to me. So I'll save that. Okay, now we're gonna go and change the materials for the wine glass. Um, so right now it doesn't have any materials on it. I'm gonna go, um, there's a few things you need to uh, adjust before we can make this look like glass. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to this little camera Looking, it's like the back of a camera, digital camera, um, but it's the render properties. So if you click that, uh, maybe just double check that you're in EV, render engine, and then you need to select this thing called screen space reflections. And then within that, you need to click off refraction. Uh, and that's just a setting we need to adjust. So now we can go and make our material for the wine glass under material properties, new. And then this is what we're going to change right here right away it's where it says surface we can click on that and we can change it to a glass bsdf which right now doesn't look great because there's a few things we need to change um the roughness to make it basically totally see-through we're going to bring the roughness down to zero um and then we're going to also change this value this ior value um, I found that 0.9 works really well, so I'm just going to type in 0.9. Okay, now we've got something that looks a little reflective. Um, we're going to go down into settings, so I just kind of scroll down into settings, um, and I'm going to click on this screen space reflection, refraction, sorry. I'll click on that. And that's what made it basically see through. So you can see it's got the outline of a glass. If I go into my camera view, looks like that. I'm gonna to change to render view really quick so you can see what it looks like. So that'll be what it looks like. Now it doesn't look perfect and beautiful because um, I don't have a background kind of uh, world image right now, but we'll leave it like this. It's see-through, we've got glass, lovely. Save it. Okay, we're just about ready to animate. Um, first of all, I'm going to add a marble into this. Uh, I'm going to go back into sh shading view. Um, and I'm going to add a marble. So, uh, sorry, I'm going to go into top view. Shift A. I'm going to add a mesh UV sphere. And it shows up right in there, but it's actually pretty large. So I'm going to scale that down. Uh, however big you want it. And then I'm just going to move it into the um, into the cup. I'm going to scale it down a little more. So if you hit Z, sorry, if you hit G and then Z, we can move it just up. And now it should be kind of sitting in the cup. Um, okay, so now we're ready to animate, which is our first animation. So this is the first time we're going to be using anything down at the bottom down here. This is basically where you can see kind of as you go along, um, that's going to be like your animation going along in time. These numbers represent frames and about 25 frames equals approximately one second. So we're going to kind of start by working in groups of 25 frames. So um, we're going to start at frame one and then the next one we're going to be at frame 25 because that'll be like a second later. 
So what we have to do is we have to set the position. Um, so set where we want things to be um, at the beginning and then at the, uh, the time frames that we choose. So uh, I'm just going to change this to uh, x-ray mode real quick so that I can see where my marble is in there. So I just turned on x-ray. So first thing I'm going to do is I've noticed I'm in keyframe or frame one. Um, which is where this is where I want my cup and my marble to be. So I'm going to select my cup. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select my marble. And then the shortcut to set these positions here is to uh, hit I on your keyboard. I. And then go down to where it says uh, lock rot scale. So basically that just... Um, sets the location, the rotation, and the scale um, exactly where it is right now at that frame. So at frame one, the cup and the marble will be right there looking how they are. Now I'm going to switch to uh, frame 25. So you go here, this is where the frame, uh, you can change the frame number. So I'm going to go to frame number 25 because that's about a second later. And I'm going to move these. So I'm going to rotate my cup about 30 degrees. So I hit R and then I hit 30 and it's just kind of looking like it's tipping over. I'm going to click to release it. I'm going to hit G so that I can move it up a little bit because it was kind of falling through the table there. So there we go. And I'm also going to move my marble. Um, and I'm going to move it kind of up to here because it would be kind of like if it were tipping over, it would be kind of on that side of the cup. So I'm at frame 25, I've moved them to where I want them to be. I'm gonna uh, select both of them, so hold down shift to select both, hit I, and hit, and hit lock, lock, rot, scale. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, change this to uh, frame 50, so from 25 to 50, and I'm gonna move them back Kind of to, so I've got it rocking one way, I'm going to move it back the other way. So I hit R and then negative 30, we'll move it back 30 degrees. Click to release it. Um, and I'm going to move it back down because I don't want it jumping off the table. And then I'm going to also move the little marble guy. So I'll put him back in and maybe he's kind of around there. Okay, I'm going to select them both. Hit I and lock rot scale. Okay, so those are locked in at frame 50. Now let's go to frame 75. And we're just gonna rotate the cup back the other way. So I'm gonna hit R, negative 30. Click to set that, and then I'm gonna move it up again because I didn't really want it tipping that way. Okay, that looks good right there. I'm gonna grab the marble, move it, and I'm gonna set it so it's just like almost falling out of the cup. Okay, select both of them, hit I, lock, rot, scale. Okay, and then on to frame 100. And so for frame 100, I'm going to have it, the cup is going to have fallen over. So I'm just going to rotate. I won't type in a number this time. I'll just have it so it's kind of going to be laying down. But i got to move it to where, um, where it would have fallen down kind of naturally, probably right about there. And then the marble will have fallen out of the cup. Okay, I'm gonna select them both. Um, hit I, lock up scale. Uh, and now I'm going to kind of go uh, backwards a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to frame 85. Let's see where we end up there. Yeah, the marble's kind of fallen out. Oh, that looks good, uh, but I want to move it out a little bit more. Oops, undo. Sorry, go to frame 85. Uh, I'm just going to move the marble a little bit more out so that it looks like it's kind of falling out a little faster. And hit I, I've got scale. Okay, back to frame 100. So I've got the marble on the floor, or sorry, on the ground. Uh, at frame 110. So moving a little faster, because we've got kind of those less frames between. I'm just gonna move it so it's like doing a little bounce. Right about there. And I'm gonna lock it there. 
Uh, and then we'll go to frame 125. And I'll grab this, move it over here. So it's like it did a little jump and fell down. Uh, moving it up a bit. I lock that scale. See, notice how I'm not doing anything with the cup now because the cup is just falling. And then maybe at frame 140, I'm going to have the marble just kind of have rolled away a little bit. And hit I, lock rotation scale. Okay. Uh, so let's see what we did. I'm going to save it first. Let's see. We'll go drag this back to the beginning. There's probably an easier way to do it. But we'll start at frame one. And then we can play it and watch what happens. Tips. Oh. Tips and falls, bounces, and rolls. Rolls a little fast, but that's okay. So you can see it's kind of realistic. Uh, you can play around. I'm just going to leave mine there for now, but you could play around with um, the location of things if you want to make it look a little uh, better than mine was. Um, so a couple other things that we have to do. Uh, I'm going to go back into materials view. Um, and I didn't put a material yet on my marble, so I'm going to do that right now real quick. So I'm going to uh, sphere, I'm actually going to uh, shade it smooth first. So I'm in object mode, right click, shade smooth. I'm going to add a new material and I'm just going to change the base color to black. Uh, ooh, I'm going to make it a little more shiny. Maybe metal. Okay, something like that. Save it. Okay, so we've got a marble, we've got a cup. Um, I am not going to show you how to add the background, but if you'd like to, I could do that. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I've got it in my view. Oh, so my camera, I've got rotated wrong, so I'm going to rotate it around. And I just want to set this so that I know my marble is in there uh, at the end where it ends up. Sure, that looks good right there. Okay, before we go to render and save this, uh, just a couple other little things you might want to do. I'm just going to, um, in render mode, I'm just going to add some more lighting. So I'm going to, um, I was in top view, I'm just going to select my light. I'm going to move it around a little bit, but then I'm going to add another one. So shift D to duplicate the light. And then I'm adding another one over here. I think it just looks a little better when it's rendered. Um, yeah, something like that. Let's go back and move this one closer. Okay. Um, so once you're ready to render, once you have it how you like it, um, you can... Uh, you're going to have to make a couple adjustments to kind of the settings to save this. So first thing is you're going to go over onto the side um, and this little printer looking thing, output properties, you're going to click that. Um, I don't need any of these. You just need to have your output um, set up to save it automatically when you render it. So Basically, you're going to go to where this file is. Uh, I want to save it in the correct spot, so I'm going to click on this file looking thing. I'm going to go into Blender Animations, uh, my folder here, because that's where I want to save it. And then I'm going to type the name Wine Glass Animation. Accept that. And then so it's saving it in there, and I've got a name for it. Um, and then you're going to want to change the file format from PNG, which is a photo. You're going to save it to AVI JPEG. So if you click on that, uh, everything else is fine. Now, when you go to render this, it's going to take a while um, because it's going to render frame by frame. So one really important thing to do is you're going to want to make sure that your um, you're only rendering as far as you need to frame wise. So right now, um, all my action kind of happens up until, uh, where's the last thing? Like my marble stops moving around frame 140, 150. So I really only want to go to frame like 155. So I'm going to change, uh, my start is at one, my end I'm going to change to 155. 
And then that way, all that's going to be rendered is just in here from frame one to uh, frame 155. So that should be it. Then you're going to go, you can go up to render and render animation. Um, or if you do control F12 is the shortcut, but I'll render my animation and then I'll come back to you once it's done rendering. It's going to basically render frame by frame and it takes a while. Once it's done rendering, uh, you basically will be able to find it in your folder wherever you set it to save. Um, so like on mine, I'm just going to go in the finder and I saved it in my Blender animations. I have so much stuff. Um, but yeah, so your file should show up in there and then you can open it with whatever video program you have. I have QuickTime. And then there you go, you have your animation.